My name is Gianfranco Berardi, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I encourage curiosity and support creativity through my solo indie game development studio, GB Games, LLC. This is the Freshly Squeezed Progress Report companion video to go with the Freshly Squeezed Progress Report blog post I published earlier this week. Check the link in the description below. In last week's report, I talked about finishing up dynamic dialogue and conversation work in The Dungeon Under My House, my second Freshly Squeezed Entertainment project. If you've been following along, you know that The Dungeon Under My House will be a non-violent, first-person dungeon crawler, and as a Freshly Squeezed Entertainment project, it will be a polished, playable prototype that provides a complete entertainment experience. It will be freely available for desktop computers, as well as mobile devices with no ads, no in-app purchases, and no personal data tracking. I continued the work of making better looking temporary background art. The bedroom looks more like a young person's bedroom and less like a warehouse prison. Creating flat things like the rug on the floor or the window on the wall is a simple matter of using the projection tool in the GIMP, but I found myself struggling with the perspective of more three-dimensional objects such as the bed. The rooms have a weird perspective that isn't meant to look realistic, but at the same time bad art makes it look off at best and wrong at worst. I ended up projecting a grid onto the floor and ceilings, which helped me create a wireframe of the object I wanted to make, and then I drew over that wireframe. I think it worked out fairly well, at least for programmer art. In the kitchen, the counters, sink, stove, and fridge were made in the same way. In the living room, I found the stairs were challenging to create, and the couch, well, the couch needs some rework, as I did not use the wireframe technique to make it, and so it looks too flat and out of place. I keep referring to this art as uh, less temporary, but that's because I keep anticipating that I'll need to change things again. My original design vision of the house was a place where you can search for useful items, such as eggs in the kitchen, or towels in the now non-existent hall closet, things that might help with any quests within the dungeon. I still want the player to be able to do those things, so doing this art now feels a bit premature. If I later design an item into the game and need to redo the layout of the house, or make a room more obvious as a home for that item, I'm setting myself up for future rework. But maybe that kind of rework is inevitable, and so my job, as someone working on the game as it is today, is to not spend too much time on things that might get replaced tomorrow. For now, the game just looks a little nicer in screenshots, and maybe that's not a bad payoff for a few hours of investment. Meanwhile, I'm aware that I've been working on this project since January, and it is still in pre-production. I'm still figuring out what the game's component parts will be, and then I will start putting together the game itself in earnest. But between working on it very, very part-time, not having well-defined scope, and entering into the holiday season, when I'll have even less time to dedicate to it, I'm pretty confident that this project will not be published in 2023. I have a lot of ideas for this game, and I want to make a compelling, non-violent dungeon crawler, but I also don't want to spend three years on this one project. I'm already a little sad because it means that a lot of my ideas won't make it into the game, such as more rich and complex options for dialogue to help make the conversations a bit more compelling to participate in. But I can remind myself that this game isn't my last game. I can always build upon what I've created, adding more into a future project. Thanks for watching. Stay curious. Now, if you want to learn when I release The Dungeon Under My House, or about future Freshly Squeezed Entertainment games I'm creating, then sign up for the GB Games Curiosities newsletter, and download full-color player guides to my existing and future games for free. Again, check the links in the description.